this is Donna, Dr. Donna Simpal of the Homeschoolers of the Philippines Facebook Community Group and of Happy Homeschool Association of the Philippine Island. Last time I talked about how to choose a homeschool provider and I think one of the most uh, sought out discussions as well if a person decides to homeschool or a family is what material or what curriculum to choose. A lot of times homeschool providers provide or supply curricula in different forms. They can also open it so that parents are welcome to present what they have for as long as it is within their learning goals or competencies that the institution or the provider supports, they can welcome that. But the issue of curriculum and the decision points are really also tough because there's just so much out there, you know, ang dami pong libro, ang dami materials out there, ang dami online courses, ang dami mga package materials. So, paano tayo magdi-decide? Again, we go back to our own definition or our belief in what is the purpose of education. Bakit ba tayo nag-homeschool? Bakit ba natin inako? ang responsibilidad na turuan ang ating mga anak. So, in some way, ang tawag doon yung ating philosophy, no? yung ating paniniwala sa paraan o dahilan at tungkulin ng edukasyon sa buhay ng isang estudyante o mag-aaral. No? So, if you look at it as in terms of a learner, that your children are learners, Ano po yung paniniwala natin? What is our belief regarding how a child learns? What is the purpose of learning? And how, what are the best practices in providing the essentials to learning? No? So these are questions that as parents taking charge of our children's journey of learning, kailangan po natin bigyan ng kaukulang panahon para isipin. I know that there are again a lot of decision making areas that we need to tackle as we decide on will this be the material? Ito po ba? Are we gonna buy a boxed curriculum as in lahat na nandoon from one publisher? Or will we mix and match? Will we do blended material? Some will come from online resources. Will we do mix and match? In terms of uh, the teaching lessons, that some will be ours, at iba po, we will enroll in an online class. This can be very overwhelming for a first time homeschooler. So I think this is again one concern that we do not need to rush. And we can always start small and slow, we can always borrow and try, we can make risks if we purchase. But we always have to be sensitive to the learning experience and not let the curriculum or the schedule be our God or be the one that dictates everything. Again, some even believe that the child or the learner is the curriculum itself and everything else is just tools. You know, from the Latin word, curriculum actually refers to a race course. So it's a course of ideas and experiences that uh, the children is exposed to and you know, in, as a result of that, she or he grows. Care, an educator, says that all the learning planned or guided by the school is the curriculum. Regan says that all the experiences of a child under the direction of the school could be considered a curriculum. So, ang curriculum can be the totality of the child's experiences that is set by an institution or a school. So, if you will just substitute those words in the homeschool setup, that will be the totality of the child's experience as set or as planned by the parent, the parent who now takes charge of the child's education. Of course, you will have to consider your limitations that are provided or set by a provider if they have requirements or if they have set materials 
that they would like you to use. So to further understand the topic, let's look into the author of the 102 Topics of Homeschool curriculum. You know, let's listen to Kathy Duffy, a household name in the field of homeschooling, best known for her comprehensive curriculum manuals, homeschooling mom, homeschooling speaker, consultant, international conference speaker for more than 30 years. And let's just read one simple um, note. He says, she says that the key to successful home education, home veterans or seasoned homeschoolers will tell you is determining your own educational philosophy and your own educational goals. Then marrying them into a child's learning style or how a child learns. With these things determined, you can make informed decisions in choosing the right educational resources for each child. And that to her is the form formula for success. When you marry your child's uniqueness and how she learns into your educational philosophy and goals. And therefore, you can turn any material to work for you. You do not have to depend on expensive material, but you can learn creative strategies in how to make a material come alive or work for you. You be the leader of your curriculum, not the other way around. If you know your goals, you know different strategies on how to facilitate learning, you can adjust through trial and error, you can truly create a very specific curriculum that's going to work for your family. Of course, you need tips. We are not all educators, so let's learn. Let's learn the different approaches and creative strategies on learning, on doing projects together, doing activities that are multidisciplinary so that we can make the most of the learning session. So there are many ways to choose a curriculum and there's there are many uh, samples, okay? So from local books, you can go to our textbook suppliers, which is National Bookstore and other bookstores, and some of them are online. And you could look at textbooks, which were created for schools, and you can look at it, and you can look at the table of contents, you can look how the material is presented, and even as simple as textbooks that you may feel like it's very flat or not engaging, you can actually create strategies on how you think that content can be best learned or approached by your children depending on their interests, their age, and uh, their favorite ways of learning, right? Readers or read aloud books, either you read them to the children chapter by chapter or your children read them on their own, can act as a very important uh, part of your curriculum by the richness of what it can present, you know, by reading stories, whether it be historical books, historical fiction, whether it be for entertainment and fiction itself and nonfiction, you can actually glean a lot. Ang dami yung pwedeng makuha sa mga story ng mga tao, ng mga bayan, bansa, komunidad. And by just reading a story, you can take breaks and uh, realize what are the things can you learn from the things that surround the story. So it becomes on its own a very major part of your curriculum. Ah, okay, then you have a uh, booklet style and some would call these the box curriculum. You have the paces, the alpha omega in different subjects and other booklet types of booklet type of material and other booklet type of material that you know book 1 to 10 and then it handles different subjects this is an entire curriculum a lot also use this and love it and they may feel that sometimes they need to supplement with more discussions with projects with uh, collaborative work and other forms of assessment 
because the assessment for most of these spaces or most of these booklets are just written forms of uh, like uh, end of the unit tests and quizzes and uh, you will have to find ways to assess on other areas or on other tasks. Of course, you can also use a lot of reference books where certain subject matters are discussed more uh, in depth and lengthily. And for parents who are not masters on certain subjects, there are textbooks that are written or reference books that are written in a script style, you know? It's like you're reading it to the children instead of uh, memorized or instead of spontaneously teaching it. And um, for example, this book is The Language Lessons. It is a book levels one and two, and it is set like a script. The teacher already has the script for the day, which she reads and probably expounds on on certain areas. This is an example of a storybook in the Filipino language done by Adarna that brings in history in the setting of a child story. So it's a story of Diwawen and her friend during pre-Hispanic times before the Spaniards or the Spanish people came to conquer the Philippines. So it, it makes a child imagine what life was like during that time. So this is also a good way to start lessons on history and also on Filipino language. So as you begin to take on your child's educational journey, as you begin to take charge, you will come across a lot of decision-making when it comes to choice of material, choice of modules, choice of books, choice of the content that you will use. There are so many ways to make use of what's available locally. There are so many online resources that are free or for a minimal fee. And there are beautiful books that are also available that are, you know, might be expensive. And there are providers that can guide you on how to maximize certain material. But really, through trial and error, you can find ways to make a material come alive. You can learn how to strengthen a material. You can learn how to present it in ways that will be relevant and meaningful to your children and add on to the value of the purchased material or the material that you have chosen by just being more creative. So again, happy curriculum finding, happy searching, and don't be afraid to take your time. Again, don't rush, don't hoard. Be mindful of your beliefs on what is the role of education and uh, observe your children and consider their learning journey, where they're coming from, their stages in their you know development and choose some material and don't be afraid to make adjustments along the way bye